Hey, did you hear about that new superhero, Windman? Apparently everyone was blown away. <laughs> hey, shh! Welcome back, everyone, to Not Another Needless Sequel, where we talk movies and propose unnecessary prequels, sequels, reboots, and remakes. I'm your host, Kane. Today I have with me my wife, Kelsey. Did I do or say anything last night that... Yeah, you messed it up, you old boot. <laughs> Kelsey will tell be my co-host. No, no, tell me what I'm supposed to say so I can fix it. Nope, yeah, nope. please. This please. is how it's going in. Did I do or say anything last night to make you think this was okay? Kelsey will be my co-host <laughs> as we discuss 2005's Sky High. So, what is the plot of this movie in your own words? So oh, much like my introduction. Uh, movie's bad. No, the, the plot, not oh, your... Oh, sorry. I mean, I know. I was just saying it. So, old Squilliam... William? Yeah, fancy son. A kid, Will, has a friend, Layla, and they're supposed to go to some super-powered high school, and Will's parents are famous superheroes, except he ain't got no powers. He goes to school, gets put in the sidekicks class. Everyone's like, whoa, hee-hee-hee, making fun of him, bullying him for it. It's like a... All right, cool. So, I really liked that when this movie starts, it does a comic book panel. Like, they commissioned an artist, I guess, to write it as if it were a comic book as you hear Will talking about his parents who I guess are like the greatest superheroes in the world. They are the Commander and Jetstream. So whenever he's talking about all the stuff that his parents do, how great they are, he mentions, this is a small thing, but he mentions like, you know, it's pretty cool, especially when mom picks up pizza from Italy or whatever, and it shows like his mom flying with pizza. They do this trope in a lot of different comic book properties where they're like, this hero's so fast, they went and got food from, like, an original place and brought it so far away. I hate that trope. Because even though you were that fast, you were carrying this pizza. I don't know how fast you want to say you're going, but it's gonna be cold. Not because you took long, but because you're dragging it through the wind. Or... Like in the Spider-Man 2 PS2 game, Spider-Man, if he flips around too much, the pizza gets smushed. Well, I was assuming the pizza just would lose all of its cheese and it would be crunched because the wind for it, the force of the wind. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. bullshit and you can't do that. You would be better off grabbing whoever you're bringing the food to and bringing them over there. Yeah, I think that we should flash to when uh, Will doesn't have powers yet, and he, like, talks about it. Very invincible in the beginning. Yes. Very invincible. Yeah, which, I mean... Shout out Invincible, the TV show. It's real good. <laughs> so you do see in... He's at home, and he's, like, lifting weights, and he can't lift, like... Which, dude... He's it's, pretending he's pretending to lift weights, yes. But he's like he tries at first and he has just like a single plate on each side. Come on, guy, you can lift this. Don't be like that. And then his dad comes up and he's put on like every weight that he has and he's like, two hundred, like he yeah. just finished. And his dad says, Low weights, high rep, huh? Uh, yeah. Further making yeah. <laughs> just bullies. Him. Yeah, yeah. And then he throws that forty five pound weight at him to just like catch. Yeah, and I was like, dude, you're throwing a weight. Yeah, well, he thinks his son is super strong, which I think it's sad that he has to lie to his father. But I also thought it was extremely morbid. His dad sat on the bed saying, like, he could be shattered into a million yeah, pieces. Gets all and yet Will will carry on his mm -hmm. legacy. I was like, this is too much. Like, this is too heavy yeah. for a Disney movie. Um, one thing I forgot to mention that I wanted to make fun of here was before the commander goes upstairs he's downstairs with jetstream he kisses her and jetstream like backs off and says will is gonna be down any minute like settle down this is a disney film you guys weren't about to have sex don't make I this know. like i know he was just going in for a kiss anyway when he's heading downstairs you meet his friend layla and layla comes in she says something about like I noticed you had some recyclables in the trash, so I took the liberty. Like, you're going through people's trash. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, she's trying to save the earth with her plant powers. Yeah. But the commander and Jetstream are realtors, right? Mm -hmm. And they have, like, open houses and stuff set for the day, but then they get called off to go fight, um, go to a fight, and they move everything back, and they get in their superhero garb, and they go and fight a really big giant um, robot. Mm-hmm. 
And my only comment is that entire fight sequence of the robot where she's carrying him and he just like punches it once and then it's like dead. First off, like, why'd you call him? Must not have been that hard to beat. And second <laughs> off, this rip off Iron Giant, it's too cheesy. I think it's funny because and no offense against Jetstream, I know they say early on she's like a master of any weapon. You never see that though. All I saw was her carry him. That's all she did. Yeah. She's just there to carry him. She's his sidekick. Yeah, she's right? a real sidekick. All you can do is fly, and you're just carrying this guy. Yeah. Make him walk. Like he can do it, you know. Or also get a commander mobile, a commander copter. Get a vehicle. You think Batman makes Superman carry him? What are you doing? I know. So as Commander and Jetstream leave. Will and Layla go to get on the bus to go to Sky High for the first day of high school. Mm -hmm. When they get on that bus, all the kids want to give up their seat for him because he's the commander's son. And the one kid, Larry, or I don't know, one of the kids is like, yeah, you can have my seat. And the girl, Magenta, is sitting next to that kid. And Magenta's like, I'm not going to move. But they need two seats because his girlfriend. And Layla's like, oh, I'm not his girlfriend. And my man Larry shoots his shot. He's like, in that case, he takes off his glasses. Oh, <laughs> the yeah. first day of school, you're shooting your shot like that? You don't I mean, even know her. Do it, do it. But also in that scene, uh, Will makes a comment that like, she's not my girlfriend, she's just my friend. And like, you can tell that like, she likes him. Yeah. In that moment, like it set the tone for what we will find out the rest of the movie. Also, one of the guys on the bus says something. I don't know exactly what he says. He says like, it's going to be tough. And then he says, T-U-P-H. Maybe you shouldn't be in high school, my friend. <laughs> you just spelled tough. T-U-P-H. Well, they don't go to normal high school, so they don't really I need wondered to that learn the whole movie. Read. I'm like, are you guys fully educated as adults, or is it that you're superheroes, so you don't need any further education? I think it's the latter, even my though gosh. we'd like to believe it's not. I think it's the latter. But then we get introduced to Gwen. Well, they arrive at Sky High, and... Well, I, before that, the bus that goes there, it flies... The bus driver drives up this, like, closed road and just flies off. Is that road permanently closed? Is that why I in guess. real life there's always construction? Because secretly that's the pathway that a flying bus takes. Listen, construction where we live is never ending. Exactly. And but the thing is, is there's no dead end. It's just, it's just a closed part of the highway, but you could still see it. When they arrive at Sky High, they are walking towards the front of the school and you can kind of see people in the background using their powers. This dude lasers this girl's butt. First of all, that's not only sexual assault, but possibly murder? What are you doing? Like, is this how you're hitting on here? You shot a laser at her ass. She in turn turns and freezes them, I assume to death. They never are unfrozen. The rest of the movie, you see them a few times, they're just frozen in the background. <laughs> <laughs> they died. Maybe they have to wait for them to thaw. No, it's been they need, days. They need war and peace. To, they are dead. They need war and peace to fire them up. They have not eaten. They. Are you know what? Is that the same girl he gets with at the end of the homecoming? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, She's villains together. She kills them, rightfully so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, also, you see uh, Penny, who's a main character later on, but you see her just at the beginning there. She's the entire cheer squad, which how sad for anyone that wanted to be a cheerleader. Oh, I know. Nobody else can try out for the team because she just is the entire thing. I can see who's playing Penny right now, and it's... There's actually two girls who I believe are actual sisters that play Penny. And yeah. then, well, you know, bit of trivia here for you. Oh, you brought you, I, you I brought just, some trivia. I just realized this in this moment. It's Malika Hack, okay, who's best friends with Chloe Kardashian. That was your trivia. Yeah, I was just letting you know. Shout out, keep it up with the Kardashians. Boo, boo your trivia. Wait, I literally okay. Let me tell you this. As a person who has seen. Keeping up with the Kardashians before. I thought you were going to tell me that it was like from Bring It On Again or something. Oh, I that wish. Been <laughs> I really would have. As somebody who has seen Keeping Up with Kardashians and always seeing Chloe's friend, I never knew what the hell she did. Oh, she was very famous from that 2005 Disney movie I mean, Sky High. You're, you're prompting me to look up no. what else she's done. No, no. Literally, I think that's all that she's done is just. Let's go to her IMDb page. Yep, that's it. No, she's done other stuff. Yeah. Anyway, she's friends with Chloe Kardashian. You're welcome. You can cut that out. However, pretty smart. It's not getting cut out. 
you can be embarrassed. I'm not being embarrassed for knowing that. Some viewers who like the Kardashians, I'm not a particular Kardashian liker. However, I'm not going to hate. So they do orientation where you do meet Gwen, played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Yep, she's the bitchy girl that's rude to everyone. That's what I wrote down. Yes. And you also see that the principal is Linda Carter. Now, I don't know if you know this. I didn't write it down as trivia, but Linda Carter was the OG Wonder Woman. You know, I didn't recognize her in this, but I have seen the original Wonder Woman TV show, and yes, I can tell now. Yes, so that was her. She's the principal. And after the orientation, they go to power placement. And, I mean, I haven't seen this movie since I was a kid. So I didn't have the respect for Bruce Campbell back then in 2005 that I had now. And I was so excited to see him come out as Coach Boomer, who is leading this. Coach Boomer is basically putting the kids through this test where they need to say what their power is. And he decides whether or not they're going to be sidekicks or heroes. And what a traumatizing experience. Can you imagine? First day of freshman year of high school... You are called on a stage in front of the rest of the class, and they're basically like, you're either going to be a fucking loser, or you're going to be a popular kid, and we're going to decide that right now. That's, yeah, I mean, imagine some people with, like, stage bright. Yeah, awful. Also, he kicks one of the students off of the stage, he slaps another one's ass, and he drops a car on Will. Like, how many people has Coach Boomer killed? I don't know. This school is outrageous. Maybe it is outrageous. Maybe so. I think that when it cuts, like, obviously, like you said, he drops... Well, I guess we have lunchtime first. Because yeah, Will doesn't did... go until after lunch. Yes, so yeah. they, they stop for lunchtime. And during lunchtime, they make an announcement over the PA system. It says, like, attention, sidekicks cannot order hero sandwiches. <laughs> and I thought it was just a throwaway gag. But later on, which we'll get to it, but after Will becomes a hero... He has a sandwich on his tray. Like, so they're just feeding the rest of them scraps. Yeah, they're everybody else. The sidekicks, you get the gruel. We. You know that's happened once. Um, I I played basketball in high school, and our high school basketball coach. We went to state one year, and um, at the restaurant, like the night before the game, she was like, "If you um, are not a member of the starting five, you have to order off the kids menu. What? And the school was like paying for our meals and like, oh she was, my she was trying to tell us that we had to order as grown women. I'm like 16, like a 16 year old does not need to eat like a kid's meal. Yeah. And at least a mighty kid's meal. Yeah. And the thing <laughs> is, is like five people, like this is basketball, like five people don't play the whole game. Like yeah, a lot of people play and so some people, like, we didn't order off the kids' menu, and she tried to say something about it, and we were like, are you paying for our meal? But mm. yeah, they tried. So I very much can, like, relate to this. Isn't My it God. crazy? Like, that has happened. That's wild. Yeah. So yeah, after lunch, I mean, during lunch, I guess you kind of get an introduction to more of the people, <laughs> just more of the sidekicks, the heroes. I think that's the first introduction of War and Peace as well. Yeah. I said they're trying to make him seem like alternative edgy bad boy, which, yeah. like, I don't really think that he ends up being that. His name is War and Peace. I thought it was Warren. It is, but the way they say it, like, uh, it's War and Peace. Because he had one good parent, one bad parent. Yes, War uh, and Peace. Like, uh, it's pretty what edgy. A, what a terrible name. <laughs> so they go back to power placement. Will tries to tell the coach. He's like, I don't know what my power is. And, like, in response, the coach drops a car on him. And then it's like, oh, maybe you can fly and bounces him up in the air like he can't do anything. So he becomes a sidekick after, you know, he realizes that he doesn't have a power or after he gets thrown into the air, I guess he goes to the nurse and the nurse tells him like, you know, some people don't have powers and they shit talk the bus driver. And I was like, that's fucked up. The bus driver is so nice. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like outside, like swinging a broom around they just act like he's like te terrible he's like he had two parents that were superheroes and look at him yeah come on buddy either way he gets super nervous and he goes home after his first day of sky high his dad is setting the robot eye as like a centerpiece on the table and 
the mom is like, get that out of here. Can't you see he's setting a fucking centerpiece? He's making the table look nice. What get you- out of here. Stop. <laughs> no. They just needed a reason for him to go to the um, secret sanctum. Yes. So, But Will doesn't want to tell his parents. And it's sad because he doesn't want to disappoint them. However, like, you can appreciate his dad's, like, not being super rude about it. I mean, his dad way. just assumes he has powers. And you can kind of, as a kid, I see where this movie has a good lesson in it of great expectations from your parents. It doesn't have to be heroes for you to see kind of what they're coming from whether your parents expect you to be like them or be of a certain caliber that they've designed in their head because they've raised you and they believe this is how you're going to be and you don't turn out that way and people have a fear of disappointing their parents a lot of people don't ever break out of that and some people take a really long time to get there and so he doesn't want to tell his dad because he just showed him the secret sanctum it's a whole thing but you see now after he's set that robot eye from the beginning of the movie down which I think that robot eye is smaller than it was when they fought. (laughs) But anyway, the robot eye is actually a camera. And you cut to who will later be revealed as Royal Pain and Stitches in, like, their underground lair. It's very, like, Power Rangers. They're just watching them. (laughs) Or uh, who was Inspector Gadget's bad guy? I don't remember. Will you remember if I do the voice? No. I'm super good at doing that voice. Oh, well, let's let the viewers just start. I'll get you, Gadget! That's what he sounds like. <laughs> I wish everyone could see me right now. So, I think it's an ongoing gag, but Stitches makes some bad joke and Royal Pain grabs Stitches by the throat. I l- it's so funny. <laughs> like, he's like, uncle, uncle. <laughs> like... There's a there's definitely a line later that Stitches says that I wrote down and I can't wait to talk about it. Okay, well make sure I don't miss it. Oh, you won't. So after they do that reveal of the supervillain, we see the superhero. They're not called sidekicks. They're called superhero support. That we see a montage of him kind of learning how to be a sidekick. One of the things that they do that makes me laugh is. He's showing them on the board, like, sayings for them to say. It says, like, holy blank and blank, you know, whatever. And it's like the classic Robin back in the day, you know, be like, holy whatever, whatever, Batman. And he's, like, teaching them they need to say things like that. (laughs) Um, And, you know, they're doing all kinds of things, like, showing different tools, like, how to help their hero. Um, It's pretty funny. I mean, it's very... A unique idea i think to see that the sidekicks need to learn also it's super shitty the teacher of the class was the commander's sidekick and will has no idea who he is i know that is super super <laughs> he's sad. even like oh uh your dad never said anything about me what about your mom <laughs> i know and he's like saved his life before yeah, messed up right yeah it's super crazy then it cuts to him studying with his friends yeah at his parents house And, you know, his dad's, like, talking about sidekicks, and the dad kind of says something about how, like, that isn't how it was done back in his day. They never brought sidekicks around. I'm not even going to say what he said. I don't think it's worth mentioning. It's awfully rude. It seems like it's something else. There's an undertone. Yeah, there's there's an undertone. There's a definite undertone. And I was... Absolutely flabbergasted. However, Will eventually, like, breaks and tells them that he's a sidekick, that he doesn't have powers. And I thought that, like, the way they handled it, coming to terms with it, was a little bit better than, like, other movies would be. I mean, first he blames Coach Boomer. He's like, this is a power trip. Coach Boomer. And he goes to call him. He breaks the phone. He opens a drawer. They have, like, 17 phones in there. Like, this happens all the time. And Will is like, no, 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 it's not him. Like, I don't have powers. Yeah. And then they're sad and, you know, XYZ. They they kind of have a discussion later, Jetstream and Commander, about it. And Jetstream seems more supportive. Overall, you know, they're upset that he's apparently a sidekick, which it's ridiculous the way they decide who's a sidekick. I guess it's almost like you never, I guess, looked into or watched this. And, I mean, hell, nobody did. But when Marvel did the Inhumans TV show, a big part of that is that people gain their powers at a certain time. And based on their power, they decide whether or not you're going to be part of the royal family or you're going to be a worker for them. And it's sort of, I mean, you know, obviously, I guess Sky High did it first in this type of media. But it's very much like that. 
not to mention Layla gets made a sidekick just because she's like, I don't believe in using my powers if it's not necessary. Bullshit. You use your powers whatever you want. She climbs up on a roof and hands the dude an apple. She just raises she some says, plants. Well, she says using her powers for like. She says it later, like for violence. Violence, but yeah. In the power placement, she says when it's not necessary. I mean, I get Do her you think whole thing. She still would have been a sidekick. Than no. seeing her, I don't think she would have either because. <laughs> You could tell the entire movie, it was, like, building towards her snapping. She's possibly the most powerful one and there. And, yeah, she absolutely snapped and gave those cheerleaders, Yeah. like, so which we get to later. However, yes. Then it cuts back to school, right? Yeah, they go to lunch where War and Peace finally, like, tries to, which, one of the things I noticed about this scene before they actually fight, everybody has, like, a color scheme, and I really like that. Like, Will is always wearing red and blue. Uh -huh. He has different shirts that look like that. War and Peace is always wearing, like, black and red. Layla's always wearing green. War and Peace straight up tries to murder another kid in school. Something that if happened in a real high school, they wouldn't just have, like, a simple detention. He's throwing fireballs at him. When War and Peace threatens his friends, he gets his super strength. He's able to lift a single... Lunch table. <laughs> wow. The strength on that guy. I mean, did those you, are heavy, I guess. Did you think that Will in this moment looked like a young Bob Odenkirk? <laughs> That's the thought that came through my mind. A young Bob Odenkirk to me was still balding. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it looked like a toupee. Oh my gosh. Did he not look like a young Bob Odenkirk? I guess. <laughs> No. Just a thought. Just a thought that came through my mind. Anywho, doesn't matter. We can move on. Um, so right, they're great. sent to uh, the principal's office. Again, I mentioned she is Wonder Woman. They apparently gave her gold bracelets to wear as part of her outfit, but Warner Brothers was like, fuck that. You're not doing that in this Disney movie. Dang! <laughs> right? Because they own the copyright to it, and so they removed it from her I wardrobe mean, for the film. should they own the copyright to it? Now that... It my man James Gunn is in charge. Things are going to be set right. So, yes. We'll see. We'll all see. I'm calling it now. Hear me out now that DC is about to be super successful. Buy your comics now. Invest in it. What about Marvel? <laughs> Just kidding. Don't take investment advice from me because I don't want to be sued for this later on. Anyways, so, let's go to Will telling his parents that he has powers. Yes, he Which goes the, they already know because the principal has called them. Mm-hmm. Him opening the door. He's so strong, he broke the door off the hinges. What an asshole. But here's the best part. He doesn't try and put it back on straight. He flips it yeah, around. Right? The like, he wrong doesn't way. try and... Yeah. Have he you doesn't... ever used a puzzle, Will? Yeah, <laughs> literally. What is this? He's like a year, like a two-year-old trying mm -hmm. to fit a circle into a triangle. It's because they don't send them to school. I'm they send telling them to you, sky he doesn't high. know, and I, like, I just can't. I thought it was so funny. He didn't try and put the door back. Mm -hmm. And then, like, his dad has to take him down to the sanctum to ground him, even though he's, like, not actually going to ground him he's just so happy as things and he's like but i have to take your new xbox away and he or your xbox away and he's like yeah. but i don't have an xbox and he's like <laughs> oh you don't yeah. it's like big reveal like get out of town it's crazy and after he has shown the school his powers he is sent to the superheroes mm -hmm. side he's no longer going to be a sidekick and he goes to class and gwen becomes his science partner they're supposed to be building a freeze ray, and Gwen builds it for him because her powers are around tech. And the teacher tests it out on a student. Murder. Again. <laughs> I actually put that his uh, big-ass head made me think that he was going to be evil. <laughs> well, he doesn't there is... turn out to be evil. No, but he, I mean, except for when he murdered a kid. Also, I thought it was weird that the type of freeze that the ray shot out at the kid was different than the freeze that was used earlier by the woman who got her butt lasered. Like, the ray looked more like it put a coating of snow on them. The other one was like a solid ice cube. So maybe that man lived. No, dead. You can't freeze somebody and be like, is your heart still beating? They're dead. After that single class, Will immediately betrays his friends. Yep. He's sitting at the cool kids table and Penny, that bitch, fills the rest of the seats with her clones. And he's like, mm, He's just sorry. like, oh, sorry. There's no Get the fuck up and go yeah, back and sit with exactly. your friends. What are you doing? Exactly. He's being, he's being entranced by... Ramona Flowers. Ramona Flowers. She's got some battle scars, dude. She's got flowers. Mm. So, Anyways, yeah. Anyways, 
yeah. And then they, you know, get into the argument and they're going to have to play Save the Citizen. Yeah, he argues with Speed and Lash because they are bullying his friends and he tries to pretend that he still gives a fuck about them as if he didn't already betray them. And the thing is, is Speed and Lash earlier were afraid of Will. So I don't know why all of a sudden, when he picked up the lunch table, they like dipped out. They One of them ran away, the other guy like stretched away. But now they're so confident that they're going to beat him in Save the Citizen. Yeah. Where did this sudden burst of courage come from? Yeah. Whenever they're going to play this Save the Citizen game, they say, um, you know, remember when we used to use real citizens? It says, what? Uh, yeah, ah, uh, remember when we used to use real citizens? So did they, they truly used to kill people. Yes. Yeah, absolutely insane. I wrote the same thing down because I just. I'm telling you, this school is insane. There's murder across the board. And they get away with it. So they're doing the Save the Citizen game. And it's funny. People are like calling out like, what are you blind, ref? <laughs> That's a foul. What do you mean? What are the rules here? Yeah. What foul? What happened? You guys are using your powers and whatever, you know? And isn't it? It's uh, Will and War and Peace versus... Those two. Yeah, Lash and Speed. And um, I watched like this behind the scenes thing and I thought it was funny. Lash and Speed were like hanging out a lot and like they're just shit talking people. Like they were getting lunch and like they went to go sit at this table and they're like, we see there's no space over here. We're going to go sit on the other side of the tent. <laughs> like, they, were, they just seem like funny dudes. That's cute. But he wins the game. I didn't think they were going to win. I, I think it would have been a better lesson of the movie if he had failed to save the citizen to save War and Peace. Because Speed is straight up murdering him by running a circle around him. And War and Peace can't breathe. He's yeah. like taking all the air away from him. And he saves him. You know, he throws him at the citizen. They save him. But I think they should have made him fail. And it should have been like, well, ultimately he chose to save an actual person versus win this game. I agree. I guess in that way he did both and looked like the hero in typical Disney fashion. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But he also, after the Save the Citizen game, at some point, you know, he tells Layla they're going to go to dinner later that night. He's trying to, like, make up for stuff. But Gwen comes over to the Stronghold household uh -huh. and has dinner with him and his family. What an absolute shithead. Yeah, is. yeah, absolutely. I I actually wrote quite a bit down about this because I was so salty. Mm -hmm. But like her meeting Warren there in that moment, you could tell like that was gonna be like your typical Disney problem later on. Like Will's gonna be like, ah, she's hanging out with the enemy. Yeah, and she's like, he he he, Warren. Even though like her and Warren know that she clearly is in love with Will and Will is with Gwen right now. After that, you're gonna flash to the parents talking about Sue Tenny. Who you can tell looks is gonna, just like her. Yeah, the like, girl that's sitting on your couch. Exactly, you're not like, like you guys related. <laughs> you're just talking mad trash yeah. on Sue. Like Tenny. she disappeared sometime. Yeah, and it's like it's a problem, and I and it's suspicious. And it was even more suspicious after Gwen mentioned that her mom was dead. Yeah, and Gwen looks uncomfortable during the scene. She looks yeah. like she's worried they're Which, gonna get come caught. Come to find out that Sue is Gwen. Granted, this is a universe. If we're talking yeah. about things like. Superman is able to put on a suit and glasses and people can't tell when he's Clark Kent. She took off her glasses, so I guess now they don't know that that's, you know, the same person. And maybe it's just so over the top that they're like, there's no way this could be the same person. But Layla is left at the Chinese restaurant. She talks to War and Peace and kind of comes out with the fact that she does have a thing for Will, which they're a little extra. They're like, you're in love with it. Settle down, buddy. All right. I know. But... Will ain't that good looking. <laughs> She goes back to school and she's pissed off. Will doesn't even know. He's just like, I'm so excited to tell you I kissed Gwen. Like, you fucking asshole. Yeah. She, like, hands him a fortune cookie and he's just like, oh, I love these. And he, first of all, he puts it in his mouth and, like, pulls the fortune out of his mouth. Who yeah. eats it like that? I don't know, but you're making me want some Asian food. <laughs> no. We can't, can't do that. Oh, okay. Oh, wait. One time after Gwen leaves the house, we show that Royal Payne and Stitches were are watching the house again. And Royal Payne goes to grab Stitches by the throat and he blocks it. He goes, oh! And she, like, <laughs> uses the other hand and grabs his throat. I'm telling you, that yeah. gag is fantastic. Oh, my gosh. So Layla is now doing this thing where she's pretending that she was going to the dance with War and Peace because uh, Will's like, I'm going with Gwed to the dance. And I think it's funny. She sits down at his table and he's like, this is not cool. I mean, 
he says, you know, did I do something last night to make you think this was okay? And then the other sidekick starts sitting down and he's like, what the hell? And he gets up and leaves and the one kid, DJ or Ethan, what, what's I don't his, know, name? his name? E Ethan, I believe. Ethan is like, is this still the tough guy's table? <laughs> the tough guy leaves. And that was funny. But they start doing this whole thing where she's pretending to be dating him. You know, she's like sitting next to him, like laughing super loud at his jokes that he's not making. All this stuff to manipulate Will. Uh, meanwhile, Gwen is, you know, basically doing the same thing, manipulating Will to kind of abandon his friends. Not that he needed much. He quickly betrayed them. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, you get like this scene where Gwen is over at their house studying and she wants to have a party there. Or she she says like... It's a homecoming meeting because there's been a problem with the decorations. Yes. And she like bullies or she manipulates Will. She's like, I just thought we could spend more time together. And Will like is like, oh, okay. Like, Will, my, my friend, if you were going to get laid, it would have already happened. It bringing more people over is not going to increase your chances of getting laid. I literally said letting some girl throw a party at your house is pure manipulation <laughs> and you're too stupid to realize it. He's blinded by the offering. <laughs> Gross. What a terrible... <laughs> just, no, don't say the offering. Um, I'm trying not to say dirty word. It's it's a Disney movie, but this is not a Disney podcast. He's, we can say he's blinded, he's blinded by, by the, the thought, pussy. He's blinded by the thought of possibly being able to have sex or, you know, just a girl um, and doesn't realize that she's been separating him from everyone. But also, like, I guess he takes her down into the sanctum because she's like, can we go somewhere private? Yes. And takes him down to the sanctum and kisses him. Gwen distracts Will while Speed grabs the thing and i mean you see it is that you his see name? his name speed. is speed oh my god i called them speed and lash a minute ago you think i, I made that up <laughs> even worse look so speed runs by i mean you don't see that it's him but you know and her hair like moves with the wind and he didn't notice that some i'd be like what the fuck is that why would there be wind in this basement like what was that layla comes over to that party and gwen's a total bitch to her yeah Gwen is like, you know, fuck you. He doesn't care about you anymore. Luckily, Will finally grows some fucking balls at that point and is like, what did you say to Layla? Fuck that. I'm not going with you. Good for him. Oh, that entire scene of him dumping her was so hilarious. She's so weird it, about it. It was even more funny because they've only been dating for like two days. Why do you care, right? Your plan is complete. Who cares know. if he dumps you? I know. And you're an old lady. I know. <laughs> like... What's wrong with you? I know. But... So he decides he's not going to the homecoming dance. Yes. And Will's parents are still going to go for fucking no reason. They're like... They're weirdos. They're the kind of people that... Look, if you're listening to this podcast and this is you, I'm sorry. But I'm not taking this back. They're the kind of people that don't have kids in school, but are still going to the school games. Like... No, it's the type of people who's like, man, man, yeah, I could have made it. Used to that play, too. I played three years of JV in high school. Yeah, yeah I almost made exactly. it. Had I not torn my ACL. Yeah. Like, why sure are you, you did, going buddy. to this high school homecoming? Anyway, at the homecoming, they reveal that... Wait, this is out of nowhere because I forgot to mention it, but it's the most important piece of trivia I have for these Disney movies that don't have much trivia. During that party, there's a guy that grabs a slice of pizza and he's wearing red and blue and then he climbs up the walls. Spider-Man and that actually is the reason why Disney decided to buy Marvel because they plan to do an entire spin-off based on that character mm. I just made that up no oh. do you really think Disney bought an entire company for that character I mean no because they still don't even own Spider-Man Sony does you're right <laughs> so just trying to be sweet but it's fine you just went with my trivia like yeah. you're just gonna let me sound stupid. yeah all right because I love you. This is his podcast, not mine. It's fine if he looks stupid. <laughs> I don't really care. So I know I'm smart. At the homecoming, Gwen reveals that she's royal pain. And I was like, this is the only reason she became the homecoming committee leader. So yeah. she could put up the decorations that said royal, royal pain. pain. <laughs> what I think is good about that, right before the homecoming, they decide they're not going. They're talking about introducing the stronghold three and the parents put their hands on their hips and yeah. like... It's the worst thing, but I do agree with the Gwen, like, I am royal pain. Like, why did you come up with that? Why is it royal pain? Why isn't it, like, techno... It's a royal pain in the ass. Yeah. You know oh, saying? my God. <laughs> um, 
I also decided that War and Peace was my favorite character for him being... Um, him showing up? No, for him... Games? Well, no, for him looking like he's about 30 years old <laughs> is really... I was like, you got it, Disney. He was actually, I believe, the same age. Like, all the kids Man, were kind of... Man, he looks so old. <laughs> He just, I think it's just that he's a lot taller than the rest of them. Ah, uh, that could and, be it. And, you know, he's more muscular than a much of, or many of the males in that That's true. Friend I, group. I guess I didn't consider that. But, yeah, he so, showed up for her, and he was nice. That was nice, yeah. He wore a suit. He was like, my dad doesn't have much use for it in prison. <laughs> I was like, yeah. And that, it was that line. I was like, he's the best. Yeah. Um, But when Will decides he has to get up there to sky high to save the day best scene of the movie he whips out a velcro wallet and goes you can hear it go <laughs> <laughs> to get the card out much with to the like times. all the business i was like my god it's so 2005 he, well that and so teenager like you had a velcro wallet when oh, you were yeah. a, I had a I mean, spider-man velcro wallet yeah he did <laughs> yeah listen to that ladies when... jealous <laughs> when royal pain starts blasting people with the pacifier tell me why a room full of superheroes just watch they're just like oh no like she's doing well, it one at a time what i don't understand is like things went so south so quickly at this dance and they're doing that to literally like all of the adults in the room but i don't understand why they're changing everyone into a baby because why what's the point of loading them all on the bus like well she comes up with her evil plan later is that she's starting a super villain school oh okay but that makes more sense i was just so confused why everyone was going to be a baby literally the entire place is filled with superheroes whether they're adults or kids and they're all just like burr also why the fuck are all these other kids on her side? They were not there when she was... Like, she has her whole revenge story. Mm -hmm. Why is Penny on her side? Why are Lash and Speed? Why are you guys supervillains? Also, you're showing these supervillain tendencies. You should be expelled. You've been a supervillain this whole time. Even when they're playing the Save the Citizen game, Speed and Lash are like, we obviously want to be the villains. Get out. You're expelled. Yeah, you shouldn't be here. Exactly, exactly. And then, like, you know, Will gets up there and... Royal Payne has her whole talk with him and, you know, I am Sue Tenny mm -hmm. and all of this. Um, but when she's, like, talking about how she got turned into a baby, the jester, what'd you say his name was? Chuckles? St Stitches. Stitches. Stitches says, Daddy's little girl. And I was just like, Ugh. Why did you do that? Like, he yeah. was, he, first of all, <laughs> why was he there? Yeah. He says, like, he was there and he picked up this baby. Was he one of the heroes, or did he just show up and was like, I want to be. Yeah, I'm just going to pick up this baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was the worst line of the movie. But then Will says, oh my god, I made out with an old lady. Oh my god. Which was such a good Disney, like... Joke. Yeah. Also, when he's fighting, and he's, like, super strong, he didn't pull no punch to Royal Payne's face. <laughs> He did not pull the punch. He was not like Spider-Man at some point. I just stopped pulling my punches. Yeah. No, he never started pulling oh. punches. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, he gets, like, the reveal that he can fly. She, like, throws him out the window or something, and mm -hmm. he flies. Um, he also, like, saves the guy that voice acts SpongeBob's new house from being crushed by Sky High when she deactivates the gravity. Well, but before we even get to that, all the sidekicks have been fighting this whole time right mm -hmm. and that like the little one that turns into the liquid i don't know his name ethan, yeah. ethan stuffs that stretchy guy's head in the toilet and he can't get it out so he's drowning oh my god i didn't even think about that yeah. another murder another murder also another, we need a murder counter going, yes ding, ding, ding. <laughs> speed is a fighting war and peace Speed is the guy that fought him during Save the Citizen, ran a circle around him, and sucked the air out. All of a sudden, he's not doing that. He's running back and forth down the hallway. He's not hitting him. He's just running back and forth. I think that that victory made him cocky about it. And then the cheerleader tries to come after Layla, and she just... It's creepy. She wreaks... I mean, she wreaks havoc with those trees. She does, but when she's coming towards her, she's like, Go, Penny. Beat Layla. Ew. Yeah, it's creepy. <laughs> like, that's You're super right. weird. It but is yeah, creepy. She punches Layla once. It's the fakest Disney punch. Yeah. And Layla's like, well, you fucked up now. And just boom. Fucking. Because she still wasn't even going to use her powers. Yeah, she was just like, oh, I and don't then you just believe see in how this. how crazy she can be. Yeah, it was so good. Yeah, but the gravity. Yes, the voice of SpongeBob's house. You're talking, they're talking about that. I wrote a comment. They're talking about extra insurance. Like, I, I know, I know. We 
shouldn't have paid. Do you see how big that house is? It ain't like they couldn't afford it. The thing is, is you live in a world where they know superheroes are real. You absolutely need the extra yeah. instrument. <laughs> it's yeah, like, I know. Superman's going to come by and throw a car through your house. Like, please... Just get the extra insurance. Yeah. So Penny is like wrapped up in the vines from Layla. She's, first of all, she says like, don't leave me up here. I don't want to die. The whole thing is going to fall down. Fuck you. You were going to kill everyone. And now you're like, spare me. Also, all your clones are wrapped up in these vines. You can just pull your clones back and then put them back out and they won't be in the vines anymore. Mm. Why are you just sitting up there? You know, the, the day, I mean, everything gets wrapped up pretty easily pretty quickly like they turn the people back into the adults well the fucking uh the one teacher with the big head is like he can still talk as a baby and he's like i think i can fix this and then just the worst joke of the movie the absolute worst joke i cringed i, I took a I, point away when i heard i it. did too he said regrettably i've made boom boom and i i paused the movie i was like I'm not sure I can finish this. I'm about to cut it from the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I don't exactly. think I can do this. And he smiles after, like, he Jesus. changed my diaper, basically. Yes. Disgusting. I think he has an obsession with that. Um, but they try and give, like, the heroism award to the strongholds, and the dad is, like, he gives it to the sidekicks. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think Warren was a sidekick. And he, he wasn't. was standing they in that, that. View And he was standing in that group. Yeah. So I was a little confused, but maybe he was just standing there, you know, because he was the broody outcast. I'm not really sure. But I will say the song at the end of the movie, perfect. They used to play on Disney Channel. They would play a music video for that song that showed like people dancing and it would be that song. It was an absolutely <laughs> perfect song to end on. He's like, my girlfriend became my wife. Arch enemy, Ugh. my arch enemy became my best friend, and my best friend became my girlfriend. God. Yeah. Also, and they all went back to homecoming after that. Like, just a, a small thing about that. Linda Carter, when she locks the villains in the detention room until they can go to jail, she says, What else am I supposed to do? I'm not Wonder Woman, you know? Oh my <laughs> gosh. Yeah, I mean, movie wraps up pretty good, I guess. I gave it a, a 3.5 out of 5. That's really high. I mean, it's the same that you gave to I Am Legend. Yeah, I gave it a 2. It's, you know, I, I want to say that as far as Disney movies go, which granted, since I've been an adult, I've not watched a lot of the old classics over and over again. But Except High School Musical. Well, yes, but we watched Eddie's Million Dollar Cook-Off as a test for the podcast, which nobody will ever hear unless, you know... We ever take off. If we ever take off and people want these extra episodes, maybe, but... Doesn't seem like anybody wants their... <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that movie was really bad compared to this one. I think this one was I better. Agree. I think this one had a lot better actors in it. I think the overall message was a lot better I feel like they poured a little more money into this, and the script was better. But yeah, there was things in it that I just couldn't jive with that I had to take away points for. I mean, it lost points. For the boom boom. And for the comment about the grandfather at the beginning. And for daddy's little girl. <laughs> that, absolutely, a whole point just oh for God. that. But yeah, I mean, it wasn't a bad movie. I mean, I guess I could raise it to like a 2.5, but 2, 2.5, same thing. You're good. It's not a 2. Let's play a game. Do I win something? No. What is it with you <laughs> and winning stuff? I just like to ask, and the answer is never yes. <laughs> it's not that kind of game anyway. Uh, okay. And then, first of all, the answer has been yes. Thank you. Oh, okay. It's recorded, and it's posted. People know there's been a yes. <laughs> yes. So yes. you're going to pick a power one through five based on the powers from the movie. You're not going to read the powers. Don't look over. You're just going to pick a number. And then I'm going to give you a scenario that you're also going to pick the number one through five. And we'll see, how would you solve the scenario with the power? So first, pick a power, one through five. Three. You got plant manipulation, so Ooh. Layla's ability. Now pick a scenario, one through five. Two. Two is alien invasion. So let's say in the style of Man of Steel, the Kryptonians coming to mm -hmm. Earth, and you need to deal with that. Yes. You think you could do that with plants? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. How? <laughs> well, probably not, but you see, <laughs> Kryptonians don't like red, right? Red sun? <laughs> yes. We're talking about all plant life, all, right? I mean, yeah, I guess so. 
Okay. So I feel as if I would take all of the plants and tie down their ships. You can tie them down, right? And then with my photosynthesizing ability, I would turn the sun into, <laughs> is it red? Is it the red planets that are not as strong? I think you're... <laughs> I think you're making quite a leap of what these powers can do. <laughs> uh, listen, I was just told we don't really know what she can do. Poison Ivy in DC Comics has taken on Superman and lived to tell the tale. So I'll give you the benefit of that. So the point is, is I'm going to use my photosynthesizing chemical plant abilities to make it to where they don't have their super strength. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then all I got to do is time up. Choke them to death oh my with gosh. my branches. I didn't say you had to kill them. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, pick another power. Uh, one. Flight. And then the scenario? Three. Plane crash. Hot diggity dog. You don't have super strength. But I have the power of flight to fly by and wait. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh my god. I'm just kidding. Listen, what's going to happen? Plane's going down, right? Beep, beep, beep. Emergency path lighting. We've been on a flight like that before. It wasn't going down. Uh... <laughs> Not... To the extent that this is. Not this is to going extent. to hit. Okay, but you know how they land the thing on the H Hudson? Yeah. Is it the Hudson? Yeah. yeah. You're going to help so, guide them? No, what they're going to do is they're going to level out. It's going to peter peter down to some speed. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly as they pass people out of the side of the plane. Oh, not too shabby. All right. I like that. I would have just gave up. I would have been like, all right, I can't do anything about that. <laughs> all right, <laughs> pick a power. Uh, five. Okay, that's tech, so like Gwen. Okay. And scenario? Four. Natural disasters, so I don't know, tornadoes ripping through. So, okay, if it's a tornado ripping through, we're going to make uh, better safe rooms. In all houses and then the tech once the houses are wiped out and gone is going to have a way to clear off the top of the holes where you come out and you don't have just like trouble going yeah. down and also the tech is going to be like uh robert donnie jr iron man type where it can like help clear out and like rebuild things i build a weather machine and make it so there's no tornadoes that's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> but i like deers yeah, that's what I thought. Nobody asked you what you thought. All right, pick a power. Two. And so that's super strength. And then scenarios. Five. That's a bank robbery. Oh, my, my, <laughs> my. You're not invincible. You just have super strength. Yeah. You can get shot. Uh-huh. So what are you going to do? Do I have guns? I guess you can oh, have guns. Oh, I could. Okay. Well, I'm going to be strapped up, all right? <laughs> you have and super then, strength. Yes, I could still be strapped up with okay. super strength. And then as people come in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the vault door and absolutely <laughs> throw it at these people. And then the vault door is going to be on top of them and they're not going to be able to escape. They'll be dead. It's not going to be on top of them. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> tomato potato. Oh my, what a hero you will be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, the last one you have is fire. So war and peace and this scenario is a burning building. <laughs> <laughs> what is terrible. I'm still not sure about that. Whoops. You're fucked. <laughs> yeah. There's um, nothing you can do. No, there's literally, but you know, we're going to do our best. Listen. Burn them so they can't keep screaming out. Just make sure it ends quick. Just no, but keep... if Warren's a fire person, he could go in and at least save the people and animals on the inside. Like Mr. Deeds does, except Mr. Deeds doesn't have the fire. He saves... So you can save the people on the inside, just not their belongings. I guess it depends what kind of power his fire. But what can... if he could like block the fire? You know, like well, like, yeah, can like he Baby manipulate Yoda do... fire? Like, or can he just create it? What is the? I don't. I'm gonna say that he can't manipulate it entirely, but I think like he would be able to block out like a blast, and um, he's gonna save the people inside. But unfortunately, the building will burn. You were pretty lucky with your selection of powers against scenarios until you got to the last one. I know. <laughs> so close. Well, I feel as if the alien invasion one, I could have I could have used tech. It would have been there. nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there could have been better pairings, but For sure. you got lucky. Yeah, I, strength and plane would have helped. Because I really thought you were going to get, like, fire and there was going to be plane crash. Like, <laughs> which, I mean, fire... 
Alien Invasion, I guess it would have been good. Yeah. And bank robbery, but besides that, the fire is kind of rough. You can't stop a natural disaster or a plane crash. All right, should we do sequels? Yes. So, my sequel. It's a sequel, right? It is <laughs> a... Well, listen, I could do a prequel, reboot, remake. Get out of here. Um, It is going to be a Disney Channel original sequel series oh. called Sky High Legacies. Mm -hmm. And it's going to follow Layla and Will's children. Mm -hmm. They have a set of twins experiencing sky high high school themselves which kind of seems like about an appropriate amount of time may have passed at this point yeah um so will and layla are obviously still superheroes but they're not like his parents um especially layla like she doesn't use her super powers for violence like unless there's a necessity so she's kept with that the entire time and she took over a principal powers job and so she's the school principal and Will just works real estate and is part of the Stronghold 3. Um, however, they've slowed down a lot because Grandma and Grandpa are, you know, getting up there. Oh. So the show, I think, is going to follow, like, Lay Layla and Will's kids as the main characters showing their friends. And then, obviously, you have to have bullies and villains and how they defeat different ones throughout, like, their time. There's going to be a slow, like, big bad building throughout the first season, and they'll obviously have to fight it at the end, but it'll just be the kids. However, there's going to be four seasons, as there's four years of high school, and the last villain is going to be the one that sent all the other villains, and the kids have to work together to defeat them as they captured Grandma and Grandpa Stronghold, and they're going to be really upset about it. Um, all of the non-villain parents, so you're going to bring back War and Peace and that icy gal, the gerbil gal, and... <laughs> liquid man and <laughs> will and layla and they're all gonna come together to defeat the big bad all right not so bad mine's a thousand times more superior but <laughs> but he goes the boys route no no i learned from my hercules idea so um according don't look at my sequel don't be looking at it i can't read don't actually according to the actors who auditioned for various roles in the production the main children's parts were to be contracted for not only a sequel to the movie, but also a possible television series on Disney Channel, which never happened. But that was supposedly part of it. I'm just going to go for a direct movie sequel called Up, Up, and Away, You. Like, University. You fucking love it. You do not even know what to say. It's so Mine's good. good, too. Up, Up, and Away, You. Get the fuck out of here. It's amazing. <laughs> Fucking perfect. I wish you guys could see the real Italian hand he's got going on <laughs> and his accent's coming back. So, while in prison, War and Peace's father, Baron Battle, gets to know Gwen, Stitches, and the other villains, and they bond over a mutual hate for the Stronghold family. We get a time jump after that to the modern day. Layla is a college professor and is married to Will, who goes by his superhero name now, Colonel. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good too that's so good you know it is What's his dad's superhero name commander ah. <laughs> colonel's been keeping the world safe forever uh, war and peace runs a villain reform program and he's excited because his dad baron battle is finally about to get released from prison soon during a college football playoff match i don't know sports very well during a very important college game at up up and away you they're supposed to go against the college's rivals save you no. i'm pausing for applause yeah. <sighs> so <laughs> save you is actually being impersonated by a secret underground villain college known as revenge state boy <laughs> ladies and gents i don't know where he gets it revenge state is revealed to be led by gwen and stitches after a long battle they run off which i mean this would be an epic scene of the movie Think of The Dark Knight Rises when Bane is within, like, in the football field and he's talking. I want a big-ass battle on the field. Obviously, the football players would be superheroes, and everybody in the stands would be heroes, so it would just be an all-out battle. Um, after a long battle, they'd run off the members of Revenge State, but they'd lose a few of their own, and they'd begin trying to build their forces back up with whoever they can recruit from the past, so... All the people in the previous movie, Magenta, Zack, Ethan, Coach Boomer, whoever we can get to help them figure out what is going on. Um, War and Peace goes to meet with his father because he heard that Gwen escaped prison. He knew Gwen was in prison with Baron Battle. And 
Baron Battle claims he had nothing to do with that. You can see he's still in prison, so he's not part of this. Like, he's doing his whole prison act. He's going to get out soon. He didn't want anything to do with them. And that's kind of what I want the main focus of the story to be is about Warren's struggle with his father, who is a villain, and him wanting to be able to come to terms with that. But also, he doesn't believe his dad. He thinks his dad is involved with this. And it turns out... His dad is involved, Baron Battle orchestrated everything, and has remained in prison as a ploy to convince his son to slowly join the villains. Mm -hmm. Warren comes up with his own reverse plan to join them, and all the heroes, of course, are going to be like, what the hell, we thought you were on our side, but it's just to betray them and dismantle them from the inside so he doesn't betray his friends, and he comes to terms with the fact that sometimes parents are just not good. And there's nothing you can do about that as much as he wants them to, or he wants his father to be good. He has to save the day from them. So War and Peace is kind of the main character of this movie. But I'd want everyone else back as well. Yeah. I like it. I don't like how much trash you talk on my sequels all the time. I thought I had a good idea. Thanks. You did. But, you know, oh, okay. you didn't come up with these no. classic up, up, and away you. It's unbelievable. Sky High Legacies. Just imagine. Oh, no, no, no. No, no. <laughs> just imagine just the t-shirts. The college t-shirts. U-U-A-U. U-U-A-U. Yeah. U-U-A-U. Amazing. Hey, you guys. Thank you for making it this far. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed. Maybe even enough to share a show with someone. Leave us a review and come back for more next week. If you'd like to vote on whose sequel idea was the best, come by our YouTube channel for the polls or let us know your idea with a comment, tweet, or you can reach us at needlesssequel at gmail.com. Links, as always, will be wherever you're listening. All right, be easy, everyone. We'll see you next week. Okay, bye.